Hello everybody and welcome back to Tunes Reviews. Today we are going to talk about my 10 most beloved fragrances, my top 10 most worn in the last few years that I've had them in my possession. The ones that really make me feel like they're an extension of my personality. Most loved, hands down. I don't think that too many of these would be interchangeable. Maybe one or two, depending on my mood. But for the most part, you're going to see a lot of fragrances that are uh, reoccurring on my channel. And that's for good reason, because they're my most beloved. And I've gone through multiple bottles of each of these, with the exception of number 10, which I'll be starting out with, which is a fragrance that I found at the beginning of lockdown. I was testing it out, sampling it from Lucky Scent. And my fiance smelled it on me and said, that smells like you. And I knew right then and there, I was already in love with it, but she really sealed the deal and I had to purchase a bottle. This is Rania J's Ombre Loop. This is kind of a little bit dirty, um, but not that much, just slightly. Amber, cinnamon, intoxicating, so good. Smells like fall, smells like you're in the countryside or in the mountainside in a cabin. Love this so much. One of my absolute favorite fragrances of all time at this point, and it's something that really makes me feel like at home, nostalgic, and I easily pull it off because I just absolutely fell in love with it. Ronnie Ajay's Ombre Lou, coming in at number 10. Coming in at number nine is a fragrance that is so beautiful, and I've loved this for the better part of a decade. This is from Frepon, and this is Luministe. This is my most favorite warm weather fragrance, hands down, bar none. I absolutely adore it. There are so many wonderful memories revolving around this fragrance for me because, again, this has been with me through my transitionary period of growing into who I am today. Um, I love the energizing effect that the gin and tonic quality of this fragrance gives. My fiance loves this on me. This is so sexy in the heat. The more you warm up, the more this radiates. I do feel like this is one of those fragrances that a lot of people that may know you and know your taste will compliment, but it's not necessarily going to project a whole ton for a stranger to come up to you and say you smell good. Although I have had that happen a couple times, but regardless, this is just exactly what I've looked for in a summer fragrance. There are a few that come close to this, but this is like the number one for me. Luministe by Frepon. Love it so much. Gin and tonic vibes with some musky elements. Sexy, sexy stuff. Coming in at number eight is my favorite Frederick Mall fragrance. It made it on my list last year as well. And I had to revisit this after it was reformulated because I was head over heels in love with the original version. And they did change it up slightly, but this is a more wearable version. So if you were reluctant to check it out, I highly recommend it. It's Tunes approved. This is Frederick Mall's Musk Ravageur. And my goodness, this is just one of those that makes me feel like home as well. This is a signature scent of mine. I wear this so often. I've got a backup 100 ml bottle of this. And yeah, you've heard about it before. If you haven't, then you haven't been in the game for too long. So let me educate you. This is the Cinnabon of the niche fragrance world. This is an anomalic musk that's got quite a bit of cinnamon and vanilla, and it is so delicious. This makes me feel very cozy and safe and sound, and this reminds me heavily of fall and winter gatherings and shenanigans. So Frederick Moll's Musk Ravageur is, again, a signature scent of mine at this point, and one of my all-time favorite fragrances, for sure. Coming in at number seven is definitely a fragrance that is not new to my channel. And last year, it was a different choice from the private bun line of Tom Ford. This year, it's this one. I've kind of come around and warmed up to it yet again. Last year was Tuscan Leather. This year, it's Tobacco Vanille. This was my favorite fragrance for about five years straight. And it's still in my top five. I absolutely love this. This is just one of those fragrances that reminds me of so many wonderful, warm moments in my life. Um, my metamorphosis, again, is a human being. Um, kindness and celebration and this just reminds me of Christmas 
and Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. It's so warm and sensual and beautiful. I highly recommend it if you haven't checked it out. It's one of my all-time favorite fragrances ever from Tom Ford, Tobacco Vanille. Coming in at number six, it's one of those fragrances that I'm actually so happy that I got to see the progression of this man's life and his journey in fragrance because I used to watch him when he was a reviewer back when there was only like 15 or 20 of us around. This is from the House of Kerosene. John Pegg created this himself. He makes artisanal fragrances. I love just about every one of them. I own many of his concoctions. This one just happens to be the one that strikes all the right chords. Although there was another one that almost made it on here that was Follow. Love that one as well. But this one is just, it takes the cake. I love this. It puts a smile on my face. It's cozy. It's warm. It's sensual. This is Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene. This is lemon tea and for me, it smells like honeycomb and maple syrup. I love this fragrance. Maple syrup to me has such a positive connotation in my life. It reminds me of when I was a kid when we would go camping in the back of the pine forest that my grandfather owned. And this really just takes me there. I love this fragrance so much. It's just something that is sentimental to me and I will always own a bottle of this. It makes me feel at home. Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene. Coming in at number five is also no newcomer for me on this channel. This is my fragrance that will be my wedding day scent. It is probably still my all time favorite fragrance, but I just don't wear it as much. I only wear it for those moments that are really, really important in my life. Those milestone moments. I'm gonna wear this when I create my first feature film with a big budget. I'll be wearing it on set and for my wedding day scent. This is Creed's Royal Oud. Still my favorite fragrance of all time. Just there's a few on here that I've worn more. So that's why it's coming in at number five. But this is the epitome of what I want to smell like. This is just so warm and makes me feel like it's me encapsulated in a bottle. It's cedar wood and spices. It should have really been called royal cedar in my opinion. But it's royal oud by Creed. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10 absolutely love this fragrance so much coming in at number five coming in at number three is a fragrance that i've gone through a full 50 ml bottle of and this stuff is nuclear so if you've tried it you know that that's like nearly impossible unless you love it because again i finished it in a year span not even actually about eight months and this is just one that inadvertently became one of my signature scents i didn't intend for it to but it gets a lot of compliments, it gets a lot of attention. People love this fragrance. I love the scent bubble, the scent bubble that it provides. I love the sillage. Uh, I love the coziness of it. It's a very straightforward, simple fragrance. It's a boozy vanilla with some ginger and some citrus. And for me, it's a staple in my wardrobe at this point. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. This is none other than Nishane Ani. I absolutely adore this fragrance. It is tunes approved to the max. I highly recommend this for any of you vanilla lovers out there. The beginning of the fragrance is a little bit divisive. Some people hate it, some people love it with that citrus, but I love it. It's energizing, and then it turns into a really warm, sensual fragrance. So if you're checking out any new vanillas, be sure to check out Ani by Nishane. Love this stuff. I'm gonna buy multiple bottles for the years to come, for sure. Number two on my list is a two-way tie. I could not choose one over the other. They both have a lot of sentimental value for me. Um, as you may know, one of my very best friends passed away last year. This, these two here remind me of my journey in that friendship with him. Uh, they remind me of my journey into filmmaking more seriously. I wore these two a lot when I made my first film with Benjamin and our wonderful group of friends. And they're very sentimental to me. Sometimes I can't wear them because it brings up too much emotion and then other times I wear them for the same reason But it's a more happy sort of situation and uh, They're not going anywhere. These are two of my most favorite fragrances ever and regardless of the sentimental value I uh, love them anyways I was drawn to them from the get-go and I obviously didn't know that this was gonna happen to Ben but it just makes it that more much more special for me, so without further ado we have Francis Kirk John's Grand Soir. I absolutely love this ambery, warm, somewhat spicy vanillic fragrance. So good. 
This is one of those fragrances that people have stopped me in a store or on the street to ask to write down. And then I let them know the price and half of them are deterred and the other half are surprisingly not. Because <laughs> we're all crazy and we spend a lot of money on this stuff, right? So uh, Grand Soir is by far easily in my top three most complimented fragrances of all time. And it's just incredibly invigorating and sexy and reminds me of so many wonderful fond memories that I've obtained throughout the years. Grand Soir is paired with none other than Nasomatos Baronda, which is a whiskey and oak with some spice. This is my favorite from Nasomato. This is probably my number one autumn fragrance of all time. And it's sexy, sexy stuff. I get a lot of compliments with this as well. If you're looking for a wonderful, spicy, boozy, oak cask type of fragrance, I highly recommend Nasomato Baronda. And these two are forever going to be cherished in my collection, and I'm always going to own a bottle of each. Okay, coming in at number one. It is still a Guerlain fragrance. This is probably my second favorite fragrance of all time, right after Royal Oud. And somehow, in the last year and a half, it's become even more important to me. It's become even more of one of those fragrances that makes me feel confident and I think it's a wonderful addition to anyone's wardrobe that's looking for a gourmand fragrance that has some flair, some pizzazz, because there's an added green angelica note and if you haven't guessed it yet, you can guess it now. It's Angelique Noir by Guerlain. This fragrance is just the most romantic sexy scent I've ever tried in my entire life and I am so happy to have this fragrance in my wardrobe. I found this a few years ago, and I wasn't necessarily comfortable with wearing floral-based fragrances when I did find it, but I felt in love with this so, so hard that I had to buy a bottle, whether I was confident in wearing it in my own home or out and about in society or not. And I grew to become more confident with wearing it among people. And then I started to garner compliments with it, and that was the journey how it all began for me wearing floral fragrances or more feminine leaning fragrances and to the point where I am today where I say it's all just a marketing ploy. Wear what you like, wear what makes you feel sexy. This is what started that for me and it also has a lot of wonderful memories attached to it for me as well in my becoming confident in who I am and kind of dealing with my own struggles, if that makes sense, in becoming a man. and. Uh, I'm going to forever love this and cherish this, and it's always going to have a place in my wardrobe. Angelique Noir by Guerlain. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed my top 10 fragrances of all time. I certainly love each and every one of these for one reason or another, and each one of them makes me feel like they're an extension of my personality and makes me feel like I'm at home and cozy and confident in my approach to life and all these little struggles that we have to learn to navigate. And I hope that you find something in this list that makes you feel the same way. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks so much. Bye.